cycle Yeah, that's why I gave the problem as uh, I is less than J. Otherwise, you will need Gaussian elimination, which we'll see later. I mean, not now. Okay, so the main thing for approaching DP problem is first you have to feel that it's a DP problem. That is one main thing which you will get only by experience and solving a lot of top quarter problems because top quarter problems generally tend to be DP oriented. So that comes with experience. The second thing is you have to characterize the solution space. Like for example, uh, assume you want to print the longest increasing subsequence. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. So given n numbers, what uh, say? 1, 5, 3, 7 the longest increasing subsequence of this uh, sequence is defined as any subsequence of this okay a subsequence is any sequence which is got by deleting some elements of this array that is the order must be preserved so one, for 1, 5, 3, 7 1 is a subsequence 5, 3 is a subsequence 1, 3, 7 is a subsequence but 1, 3, 5 is not a subsequence so subsequence is any sequence which is got by deleting some elements in this array. So a longest thing, a increasing subsequence is defined as phi 3 is not increasing subsequence. I mean the elements must be in increasing order. That's called as an increasing subsequence. But 1, 3, 7 is an increasing subsequence. Yeah, this is not even a subsequence. So there are many subsequences possible. And the longest increasing subsequence is a subsequence which has the maximum length. So in this case, 1, 3, 7 is a longest increasing subsequence and 1, 5, 7 is a longest increasing subsequence and there are no other longest increasing subsequences. So, assume the question is given uh, this array, find the longest increasing subsequence of this array. How will you do it? That, so, how you should visualize this is, assume you have a friend and he's and he is trying to pick the longest increasing subsequence your communication strategy will be you will tell the next number to go to so initially he will be outside the maze you will tell the next number or in this case the first number to go to so you must tell him to go to 1 or go to 5 or whatever depending upon your needs and you should ask him to move to the number so that is if you tell him to go here and ask him to move here I mean so the communication strategy here goes like when he is at a position you tell the next number to pick all he needs to know is this he doesn't need to know anything else so the communication strategy must be effective in this case so for any DP problems you must be able to uh, what to say assume you have a friend who is trying to solve the problem ask him to Take, move, move to the next step. How you should proceed? That solves the communication step. That is essentially equivalent to identifying a witness for the problem. So, what is a witness is there are two things to this problem. You can just report the length of the longest integration subsequence. In this case, it is three, or you can tell the longest increasing subsequence itself. In which case, it is one three seven. So, for DP problems, the main thing is if you are able to report the length then you must also be able to report the witness this is called a witness 137 157 are all called witnesses to the solution because they are optimal solutions so essentially you must be able to identify witness to the solution this is the main part of dp so any dp which asks you for the length you must also be able to modify your code so that it, audio, uh, it outputs one of the answer also so yeah yeah so we discussed these three problems I'll just summarize it for optimization problems uh, yeah optimization problems are minimum maximum problems you have to identify decision points that is decision points are those points which for which you have to take the choice that you want those are called as decision points for counting problems you have to identify all the valid choices present at a state so those are counting problems and for strategy problems under uncertainty which was the third case that we discussed with the probability p you ask your friend to move
key moves, inform, informs you of the random uncertain event that took place and you tell him the next move and so on. So in the case that we saw, you ask a friend to choose the edge 1, 2, he will do that with only a probability. So he will try moving that direction, he may succeed or fail and move in some other direction and he will tell you whether he succeeded or not. So in the next node, you can basically tell him again. So that is basically you are informed of his movements at all times, you can assume that. Yeah. Previous slide, previous slide. Okay. So I will discuss one problem. Uh, the problem is called long and co longest common subsequence. So given two sequences of, one second. Okay. Given two sequences of, uh, sequences of numbers, say uh, 1, 6, 3, 5, 8, and uh, 3, 6, 5. So this is sequence 1, this is sequence 2. So given two sequences of numbers, find the longest common subsequence. You know what a subsequence is. So this will have many subsequences. First of all, how many subsequences will an array of size n have? 2 power n. I mean, assuming the elements are distinct, it's 2 power n. How it is is, what's the definition of a subsequence? Any sequence which is up obtained by deleting some elements of a, sequ a sequence is called a subsequence. So, there are n numbers here. Each number can, you can have it or not have it. So, there are two choices for each number. So 2 for this, 2 for this, 2 for this, 2 for this, 2 for this. According to basic theory of multiplication, it is the product of all these. So it becomes 2 power n. So there are basically 2 power n subsequences for a given sequence, assuming the elements are distinct. I mean, if the elements are same, say, phi and phi, you will have only 3 subsequences instead of 4. Because uh, the subsequences are null set, uh, the set phi, and the set phi comma phi. I mean because the set phi occurs twice basically. So that's there are two power n subsequences. So you okay the naive way is you implement all the subsequences of the uh, you uh, get all the subsequences of this you get all the subsequences of this and find that intersection that is this will be a set of subsequences this will be a set of subsequences find that intersection and take the set uh, I mean of the intersection take the one which has the largest uh, size correct that is the brute force right so uh, assume you have the subsequence a a plus 1 so on up till c in the first sequence and assume you have uh, s2 of b b plus 1 so on up to D. So, isn't your state just represented by A comma B comma C comma D? I mean, this will solve the problem, right? A comma B comma C comma D will be 0 or 1. 1 means it is they both the two subsequences. I mean, okay, sorry about it. One second. The problem is contiguous, contiguous subsequences not okay I mean sub word that is okay I'll tell the problem again the problem is not all possible subsequences subsequences is deleting any element the problem I want to tell is sub word in which means you can take only contiguous elements so you can take any contiguous elements so for example for one one six three five eight one one six uh, one 1, 6, 6, 3, 5, 5, 8 are all subsequent, uh, whatever, subwords of this. So, okay, how many subwords are there for a string of length n? For a array of length n? NC2. NC2. I mean, basically you choose any two indexes, any two indexes into the array, and the uh, all the numbers between them will form a subword. So there are n, n c two possible possible 
subverts. So the brute force can be, I mean, one solution is uh, you are trying to match the array starting at index A and ending at index C in the first array and starting at index B and ending at index D in the second array. So the state will be A, B, C, D. It will be 0 or 1. 1 if the, the these two match and 0 if they do not match. Agreed? I mean, is everyone clear that A, B, C, D will be a state? I mean, does anyone have a doubt till now? Any questions or any general questions? I mean? Okay, so this is the general state. What is the first level of optimization you can perform in this state? Yeah, as she says, if the length of this sequence is not equal to this sequence, then trivially they both cannot be equal. Because only if the lengths are equal, they can be even be equal. So this is a overkill, A comma B comma C comma D. Because to have a one, we must have the condition C minus A plus one equal to D minus B plus one for sure. Only if this condition is even satisfied, we can have a match. Everyone agree? I mean, is it unclear? So the state now reduces to a comma b comma c instead of a b c d because if we know a comma b comma c we can calculate d with this equation agreed okay so this initial state was o uh, n raised to 4 now we have reduced it to o n raised to 3 the important observation here is if a comma b comma c is equal to 0 can you tell anything about the value of a comma b comma c plus 1 yeah yeah so if a comma b comma c is 0 the state that means a to a, a to c and b to d d assume you have you can find d if a to c and b to d do not match then surely a to c plus 1 and b to d plus 1 cannot match. Agree? So, and if a comma b comma c is 1, can you tell anything about a comma b comma c minus 1? It should be 1. Because if a to c match with b to d, then a to c minus 1 must certainly have matched with b to d minus 1. True? So, all that is happening is, if you plot a comma b comma a plus k versus k the graph of a comma b comma a plus k versus k for all a comma b how will this graph look like that is for a given a comma b if you plot a, a comma b comma a plus k versus k for all k i mean k is the x-axis and this function of a a comma b comma a plus k it, should, it is basically a boolean function, right? This will return a 0 or 1. How will it look like if you plot k versus f of a comma b comma a plus k? Okay. So, it will be a, a sequence of 1s followed by a sequence of zeros. Right? I mean, the sequence of 1s can even have 0 length. If s1 of a not equal to s2 of b, then this, the, the sequence of 1 can be of 0 length also, I mean. Basically what I am trying to tell is, if you encounter a 0, you won't have a 1 again. So, is everyone okay with this observation? I mean, are everyone clear with it? So, basically, this graph is a boolean graph with 1 or 0. It is it's called monotonic. I mean, this graph is monotonic. So, what you can do is, generally, in DP problems, if the graph is monotonic, you will usually be able to drop one one of the state variables. That is, the state you can probably reduce by order n if one of the if you have this monotonic restriction. So, so yeah, basically, all you have to do is for each a comma b, let this point be m. 
So for each A comma B, you compute what is AM and so if the query of A comma B comma C is less than this M, 